This training covers the Miami-Dade Professional Development Registry data requirements for programs participating in the Children's Trust Thrive by Five Quality Improvement System. It is essential that complete data are provided by all Thrive by Five programs because these data are used to make decisions about continued funding and services. All of the required registry data are submitted through the Children's Forum portal, which can be accessed at this website link, which will bring you to the home page. Each Thrive by Five program is assigned to a cohort for submitting their data. Each cohort has different requirements and due dates based on their history of registry data submission. Each child care program's contact person received an email from the Children's Forum indicating their cohort assignment, data requirements, and due dates. Registry data requirements and due dates for each cohort can also be found by going to the Portal Help section and clicking on the Miami-Dade QIS link. You will also find tutorial videos and other helpful information in the Portal Help section. This page will be displayed when the Miami-Dade QIS Programs link is clicked. Data requirements, due dates by cohort, and a list of required documents to gather beforehand can be found at the top of the page. At the bottom of the page are details about education document requirements. You can also get information about data requirements and help with the Children's Forum Portal by contacting the Miami Registry team. Our Miami Registry coaches are here to answer questions and help with the data submission, the process through the portal. Please don't hesitate to contact our team by phone or email. For program directors, the process of submitting required data begins with creating a business account in the Children's Forum portal. The business account only needs to be created one time. If your program already has a business account, move on to the next step in the process. The only difference is that the business account is associated with a specific DCF license number, director of record with DCF, and the email used to create the account. If either of these changes, a new business account will need to be created and the director should notify the Miami Registry team of this change to prevent needing to resubmit any other data. For a quicker, easier process, Gather these documents before getting started. Business license and owner's contact information listed on the business license. DCF issued license and contact information for the director of record listed on the DCF license. A PDF copy of the director of records driver's license and most recent pay stub. If no pay stub exists, please contact the Miami registry team for an income worksheet. To create a business account, go to the Children's Forum Portal website and click Create Business Account. This screen will appear when you click on Create Business Account. On page one, enter the required program information and click Next. Enter the owner's contact information on page two and click Next. On page three, enter the director's information and upload required documents. We recommend entering a facility email address on this page instead of the director's email address to ensure you can continue to access your account if the program director changes. Changes to the license number or director requires requesting a new business account. Contact the Miami Registry team for questions or assistance in merging the accounts. Please make sure documents are clear and legible to ensure the request does not get rejected. Also, please be aware that calendar buttons must be used to enter dates throughout the portal. On page four, confirm the information entered is correct and click submit request. If the submission fails for any reason, a message like this will appear on the screen. 
If this occurs, click Create Business Account tab and repeat the process, providing complete and accurate information. A message like this will appear if the submission was successfully completed. Please take note of the request ID and provide it to the Miami registry team should you have any questions about your business account request. This ID will be used to look up the request. After the request has been submitted, the director and owner will receive a series of emails. The first email is the business account request received shown here, which will come from site accounts at thechildrensforum.com. The director and owner will both receive this email. It typically takes two to five business days for a request to be processed. The decision email is the second email. The director and owner will also receive this email from site accounts at thechildrensforum.com. The email example shown here is for an account that has been rejected. If rejected, the entire business account process will need to be completed again. The reason the request was rejected is listed in the email. Please note the reason so the same mistake is not made again. Contact the Miami Registry team if you have any questions. This is an example of an email for an account that has been accepted. After the accepted email has been received, the director will receive the third email with instructions to create a password. This email will only go to the director and will come from registry portal at thechildrensforum.com. A link to create a password for the business account will be provided in this email. The link can only be used once and is only good for three days. The expiration date is listed in the email. Click the link to create a business account password. You will then be taken to the portal and prompted to create a password for the business account. Enter the newly created password and click Reset Password to continue. After the password has been created, click Login to Business Account Enter the program's DCF license number for username and the newly created password. Then click Log In. If you did not receive the email with the link or the link has expired, click the Create Reset Password on the home page. Click Reset a Business Account and enter your DCF license number to initiate a Reset Password email. Log into your business account to complete the program demographic survey. Thrive by Five programs are required to submit the demographic survey annually. From the home page, click Demographics to complete the program demographics survey. Gather the following information before beginning the demographic survey. Number of lead teachers, assistant teachers, number of directors, assistant directors, and administration, number of paraprofessionals, substitutes and floaters, and enrollment numbers. On this page, enter the number of vacant and filled pos positions for each type of position. Include vacant, furloughed, and laid-off positions as long as you plan to fill or reinstate the position within 30 days. If circumstances change due to COVID-19 or other reasons, this information can be updated 24 hours after it is submitted. Only count each position one time on this page. Do not count them in more than one category. For split positions, count the employee in the position where they spend most of their work time. If their time is split 50-50,
between two positions, count the employee in the higher level position. For example, if an employee works 30 hours as an assistant teacher and 10 hours as a lead teacher, count them as an assistant teacher since they work more hours in that position. If an employee works 20 hours as a lead teacher and 20 hours as an assistant teacher, count them as a lead teacher. Employees should only be counted once on this survey. If staff hold multiple positions, that information will be captured in the roster, which will be covered later in this training. Be aware that this survey is unavailable for 24 hours after it is submitted. If a mistake is made for something or something changes, you will need to wait a day before you can change the numbers. But please do go back and make the adjustments as this information is used to determine if education and other data have been submitted for all required positions at your program. Click next to answer the remaining questions on the following pages. On page five, confirm that all questions have been completed correctly and click save and close. The next step in the process is for all required employees to create a personal account. The personal account only needs to be created one time per employee. Employees required to create a personal account and submit data include those listed here. To create a personal account, log into the Children's Forum Portal homepage shown here and click on Create Personal Account. Be aware that directors must create a business account and a personal account. All other required staff will only need to create a personal account. On this page, enter legal first and last name and date of birth. Remember that the calendar button must be used to enter dates throughout the portal. Click next to continue. Complete personal demographics on page two and click next. Enter contact information, agree to terms, and click create account. This screen shows that the account has been created and a link has been sent to the email address provided. This email will be sent to the address provided. Click the link in the email. Please remember this link can only be used once and is only good for three days. The link will take you to this page to create a password for your personal account. Enter and confirm the new password and click Reset Password. Click Login to Personal Account, enter the email address submitted as a username, and enter the newly created password. Then click Login to Continue. Please be aware the personal account username is the person's email address, and the business account username is the Child Care Program's DCF license number. Once logged into the personal account, use the left toolbar to update personal demographics and contact information, confirm employment on the My Employment tab, and submit DCF transcript and all required education on the My Education tab. Thrive by Five directors and required staff must submit their DCF transcript for verification annually. This is done on the Overview tab in My Education. 
first download, print, and complete the cover sheet. Then scan and save the completed cover sheet and the DCF transcript as one PDF document. Then, using the red browse button, locate the file on your computer and upload for verification. This process links the person's personal account to the Miami-Dade Registry database. Be sure to do this step before submitting any other education documents under the My Education tab because those documents can only be linked to the right person if the DCF transcript has been submitted and verified. An email will be sent from registry at thechildrensforum.com indicating whether the submission was rejected or accepted. The DCF transcript must be accepted and verified before a person's employment can be confirmed, which will be discussed later in the training. Once personal accounts have been created for all required employees, the director will complete the roster. Once completed, the first time, the roster must be updated annually or whenever there is a change in staff, including terminations, new hires, or position changes. Before getting started on the roster, gather the following information for each of the required staff. Employee's email address used to create their personal portal account, first and last name, birthday, date hired, hourly rate of pay, pay stub, number of hours worked per week, position title, and age groups they teach. To complete the roster, log into the business account and click Roster on the left-hand side. The roster has two tables. The table at the top of the page displayed here are new employees that have been added and those employees need to complete the required steps to be displayed on the current roster. The table on the bottom will display individuals who are currently linked to the child care program in the registry database. This list will need to be updated to reflect the current staff at the program. If the pencil icon is circled in red, this means action needs to be taken. Click the minus icon to remove employees. If you see a red flag, this also means action needs to be taken. All required staff must create a personal account, upload a recent DCF transcript printed within the last three months with cover sheet for verification and confirm employment for them to show up on the current roster found at the bottom of the page. To add new employees, click add new person. Remember that all required employees, including the director and other administrators, teaching staff and educational support staff must be added to the roster. On this page, enter new employee's name, date of birth, and email address. The most important thing to remember is to use the email address that was used to create each person's portal account. Then enter hourly rate of pay, pay stub, and position information. At the bottom of the page, enter multiple positions for required employees if multiple positions are held. Each staff member must have at least one active position, but no more than two active positions. Please enter an end date for all positions that no longer apply before adding a new position. Click Send Request to initiate a new employee email notification. 
after a new employee has been added, they will be displayed on the top table until they have created their personal account, submitted their DCF transcript cover sheet, and confirmed their employment. Once all of these steps have been completed, they will move from the top table to the bottom current roster table. If a mistake is made when entering their information in the roster, it cannot be removed. The employee must be re-added with their correct information. The incorrect information will remain at the top. Please disregard it. To update staff information, click on the pencil icon. Once the roster has been completed the first time, the roster must be reviewed annually and pay stubs must be submitted annually for all required employees, regardless of whether the pay rate has changed. Other previously entered staff information should be reviewed and updated only if needed. To remove employees, click the minus icon and enter employment end date and the reason for leaving. To recap the roster, once all steps are complete, the roster should look similar to this one. Email addresses will replace the red flags after the required steps are completed. Any added employees that have not completed the required steps will remain on the top. Red flags and or red circles means the employee needs to complete the required steps. Be sure to submit pay stubs annually for all required employees. Contact the Miami Registry team if you have any questions. Next, directors and required staff added to the roster need to confirm that they work for the child care program. This step only needs to be done one time for each employee added. Employees will receive an email like the one shown here prompting them to confirm their employment. If they do not already have a portal account, they will need to create one at this time. To confirm employment, directors and staff will log into their personal accounts. Once logged in, they will click on My Employment on the left-hand side and then click Yes, No button to continue. Once all the questions are answered, click Save to confirm employment. Employment is now confirmed. After new employees confirm their employment, it will be displayed in their employment history shown here and also on your current roster found at the bottom of the roster page. Employment is now confirmed. After new employees confirm their employment, it will be displayed in their employment history shown here. Next, directors and staff will submit required education documents. Once submitted the first time, verified, and approved by the Miami Registry Team, education documents do not need to be submitted again unless there have been changes in education such as obtaining a degree, credential, or taking early childhood credit courses. Directors and all required staff must submit their DCF transcript, any early childhood credentials they hold if not already submitted on the DCF transcript, college or university transcripts if held. If no college or university transcript, a high school diploma must be submitted. Please be aware that all foreign degrees and transcripts must be evaluated by an accredited agency. If you have questions, please contact the Miami Registry team. All education documents are submitted through the personal account on My Education tab. 
after documents have been verified, they will be displayed at the top of the page. Remember that the DCF transcript must also be submitted and verified by the Miami Registry team for any other educational documents to be listed here. If the degree shows at the top of this page under verified degrees, it does not need to be submitted again. Documents awaiting verification are listed at the bottom shown here. Please do not resubmit documents unless they have been rejected. If you hold a degree, click Degrees, then click Enter Degree Details to continue. If you do not hold a degree, skip this tab. Enter degree details and upload an unofficial college or university transcript from a regionally accredited institution for the highest degree held in the early childhood or related field and highest degree held outside of the field. Actual diploma documents are also acceptable, but transcripts are preferred. If an early childhood credential is held that has not already been submitted on the DCF transcript, click on the Credentials tab on the left-hand side to submit the credential. Again, any previously verified credentials will be shown at the top of the page and do not need to be resubmitted. If credentials appeared on the verified DCF transcript, they will be shown here. Then click Enter Credential Details. If no early childhood credentials are held, skip the Credentials tab. Complete credential details and provide the documents for early childhood credentials. The Credential Award Certification must include full name, credential name, the awarding agency, award date, and expiration date if relevant. If no degree is held but credit-bearing courses have been taken at a regionally accredited college or university, click on the Credit Classes tab. Then click the Enter Group of Classes button to submit the college transcript. Please ignore the Enter Single Credit Class button as it is not relevant to Miami QIS programs. Any previously verified early childhood courses will appear under the verified list at the top of the page. If a college transcript has been previously submitted and verified, all early childhood courses are listed and no new credit courses have been taken since that time, the transcript does not need to be resubmitted. If you are unsure, it is always best to just resubmit the transcript. Enter the information requested on this screen and upload the transcript. If you have not submitted a college transcript showing a degree or at least nine credit courses, submit your high school diploma by clicking on the High School Diploma tab. If you have submitted a college or university transcript with at least nine credit courses, skip this tab. If the High School Diploma is listed under the Verified list at the top of the page, it does not need to be resubmitted. Enter High School Information, Upload Diploma, and Save Information. The last step for directors is to check the Miami QIS report to determine if the data for their program are complete. This needs to be done annually. Log into the business account and click Miami QIS to view the Miami QIS data submissions status report. This report shows the program's annual Thrive by Five data submission status for each requirement. This report keeps track of whether or not each piece of data have been submitted by all required employees. The number of positions in the estimated goal column 
which came from the demographic survey should match the number of positions in the achievement column, which is the number of positions with complete data. It is best if directors wait to check this report until they believe all of the data have been submitted because the demographic survey, roster, and personal account data must be submitted for the report to work properly. If the numbers do not match your records, first be sure the number of positions entered on the demographic survey and employee information entered on the roster are both accurate. If those data are accurate, directors may need to follow up with employees to ensure they have created accounts, confirmed employment, and submitted DCF transcripts and other education documents. On the bottom of the report are staff details for education documents submitted by directors and employees. If there is education missing from this report for any employees, the director should follow up with the employees to ensure they submit the missing documents on the education tab within their personal account. Here are a few helpful tips. Gather all necessary documents before beginning any step in the process. Enter facility email address instead of director email address when creating a business account. DCF license number is the business account username. Email addresses is the personal account username. DCF transcript and cover sheet must be submitted as one PDF document. If all documents submitted via the Children's Forum portal must be in PDF format. Contact the Miami Registry team if your license number or director changes. Again, please don't hesitate to contact the Miami Registry team if you have any questions or need support in the data submission process. Thank you for your time.